2022. Welcome back to Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And today we're going to try to um, do a take two on the electromagnetic chuck. I have since then changed my mind <laughs> again. Um, So instead of me doing two in one box, now I'm still going to do that, but I'm going to stick with one first. Um, I originally wanted to use a box that had my name on it, uh, the Bison Workshop, simply because basically making something that has your name on it because you made it. So. Um, Without boring you guys to death, let's just go ahead and put you down here and we'll show you what my plans are. Don't forget to have your truck coffee. Alright, so basically here's what I started out with. And I'm still going to do this, but I'm going to wait until I get uh, a little stronger stuff. You know, switches and wires and stuff like that to make this happen because this is going to be one super magnet so who knows we might use this one day for a uh, a giveaway I don't know yet but I want to make one different to start off with um, so we're going to put that to the side and this is the one it has the Bison Workshop name on two sides of it so I welded this piece on there, and yes, I'll show you that weld. It's getting better, as you can see. Matt, smart ass, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, this is just going to be to hold it in the uh, vise, because this is going to be dedicated for the vise only. I just don't see a real purpose with this in the mill, simply because it's, it's not something that's precise enough to to work in the mill. Uh, yes, I could use it in the mill by turning it on, sticking a piece of metal into it, and facing the whole top of it. But because it's not precise, I, I just don't believe it's going to work. Now, this one here would be more precise because the bottom of it is machined. Uh, and it would be closer to being... Uh, precise than that one would be because that one's just pretty much wavy and you just, there's no way you're going to get that to be square but this one I would I wouldn't be afraid to do it with plus this has got a thicker out outer wall like I said it's got my name on it uh, so it's the perfect bison tool uh, I've already welded this in there and this one came out of the microwave I just took apart and it was small enough to fit in here. So, uh, basically I just did the same thing I did to that one. I welded a piece to the bottom of it to put in the vise and uh, welded this piece in there. Then I put this down in it. And uh, so now all I got to do is drill my hole for the wire, which will be right here, to go to these two contacts. And then I'll just make me a smaller box for, well, actually, uh, I think I'm going to do a different route for the switch. I think I'm going to do a foot switch. be nice if I had a sewing machine switch, but I don't have one. I have one for my sewing machine, but I'm not going to tear it apart just to use it for this. Um, I got a sewing job coming up here before too long, making new... Uh, putting new covering on my lawn chairs uh, cushions but anyway um, this is what we're going to do we're going to use this once I've got the wiring connected to it which will be so we're going to use this wire for to go from the box to the foot pedal 
and then I need to find another one. I'd like to find something a little heavier than this to go from the foot pedal to the battery. Uh, I'd like to have a wire just like this and I'm certain I have something around here that will work. I could use this but it's smaller wire. I, I'd rather have bigger wire so we'll just search around see if we can find something heavier to work with. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill a hole in here that will accept this wire. Now remember, once I get the wire in there, I'll put a zip tie on the inside of that. And then once we put our fiberglass resin in it, we won't need to ever do anything with it again because it's never going to come out of that. I really don't want to drill on the side that has my name. So we might drill through here so that we can take and strip this down and bring that wire through on that side and it'll go in between here and the fiberglass resin will pin it in place. So the next thing we need to do is drill a hole right here big enough for the wire to go through, which is probably a half inch. Nine sixteenths actually. Um, so, let me drill that hole and we'll get, get the wire ready to go in it and we'll be back. Alright, so I've got the wire cut and the hole drilled and we're not going to hook this up until we're ready to um, hook our switch up. So we're going to set this aside and then we're going to make a switch. So here is something that I'm going to try to utilize. This is a um, cutting board that I just don't trust no more to put my food on because you see these little black spots? That little black spots is mold. I don't like that near my food. So this cutting board has become an item to use in the shop. Now it is a little weak so we may have to put, once we cut our piece out, we're basically going to make a trigger or a switch that sets on the floor and you use your foot to hold. So this is going to be used, hopefully, unless I find something better, to use for the foot peg or the pedal for the foot pedal switch. So we're going to lay this aside. All right. I found one of these. 24 volt solenoids that I'm never going to use because first of all it's 24 volt and I took it apart and got these contactors out of it which were in there like that and we should be able to use the top part of it and It's a good possibility that we can use these for the contactors. Now this is the, the solenoid switch part that goes up against those. And this is basically the way it was. Just like that right there. And I'm thinking that we should be able to utilize those for our contactor. So basically, 
we got that. All right. Then I thought about using this plate, but we got to remember we have to be able to insulate these wires or these bolts so that they don't contact this. So I'm wondering if maybe this is a bad idea and we'll use something else. I don't know yet. Um, yes, I can turn some insulators to use for the contactors. And then we can cut us a pedal out of this. Let's just say that this is cut down to size. This is a little long, but uh, we'll just use this as our our template. So basically, we're going to have this hinge, and it'll be up like that with a spring. And I found two springs that I can possibly use for it because these here spring like so. Or we can just use a regular spring to put underneath of it to keep this up. And then when you press down on it, it will push this down. We'll put this up into a hole, drill a hole this size, put it up inside there, and put a little spring onto it. You know, just put a little pressure on the spring. And then drill us a hole and put a washer and a pin on top of it to keep it in place. That way when we're pushing down on it, it does this number and keeps pressure against it. So we know that we got this part taken care of. This is not a problem. The problem is these. We need to make contactors to go in whatever it is we use for the base. Now it's a good possibility. I'd like to use this. And we may still yet use it and just cut a piece of this to cover this and have the contactors in this part and then just just be held to it to this piece just as a way to keep it sturdy I could take and put this through here put a nut on a thin nut on the bottom of it And hmm. we can do that on both sides of it and just put a nut on the bottom side of it and shorten this. I mean, who knows, we can just drill a hole in this to allow for that to go down into and just put a rubber pad on the bottom of the thing so that in case we got metal shavings on the floor, it won't contact it. So, it looks to me like what I'm going to end up doing is taking and cutting two pieces of this, one to coat this, and one to use as a pedal, and then we'll put something on top of it to keep this sturdy because that's, I'm sure that'll flex. It's quarter inch thick. Actually, it's thicker than that. There we go, them odd sizes again. It's almost a half inch thick. It probably was a half inch thick before it was used so much. But this is half inch thick and that's good. So I'm going to get my stuff together here and try to finagle this. We're going to make us a switch. Then we got to figure out a hinge for it. I can make it a rocker. Or I can just make it like a drum pedal and have the hinge on the end with a spring that keeps it up and that way when I push down it pushes this down onto these contacts so this is going to be interesting how this is going to work out uh, this is basically the only thing I have to work with I hate using this but I think I have some more of this so it's not no big deal to use it we can always cut a hole here to relieve 
for the nut to go down through. Of course, we're going to use a thinner nut, and this will be cut down shorter. So wherever this is at, we ain't got to worry about this hitting the metal and shorten it out. So let me get my stuff together, and we're going to try to make a switch. All right, guys. We've got a starting point. Um, now I'll take all this apart and clean it up and probably mill that bad stuff off. But this top here, it's going to have tread aluminum put on top of it. So this is just a you know, starting point. Um, so I just took a regular stainless steel hinge and mounted it with a threaded countersink screw to this. Now this is all uneven. I'm going to have to mill all that or file it so that it's all straight. That's why I left an overhang on it so I can file it later. And so now we've got our hinge point. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out at what angle we need to put this inside of there so that when it comes down, it comes down straight onto the contact. So, it's going to be in an angle. So, we're going to have a spring back in here somehow. We don't know how we're going to do it yet, but we're going to have a spring. But we need to get the concept first. So we need to put that in there at an angle and drill this hole at an angle. That way when it comes down, it's going to come down on the contact straight. Just like, just like that. So I'm hoping I'll be able to do that. Uh, we want that to be out there about right there because we want room for a spring. Now I don't know if I want to put this back here and put the springs over here. We got to figure out what springs we're going to use. So that's what our next step is going to be is to try to find a spring that's going to work. Um, I thought about using these springs here but there's really no place to no way to use it. So I think we're going to scrap these kind of springs. And maybe use something like this right here. I'd like to try to find two matching springs. Who knows, maybe I'll have to stretch one and cut one in half. But we really can't uh, figure out what spring we're going to use yet until yeah, that, that might be the trick right there. But we can't figure out what spring we're going to use until we figure out how far this is going to be up in there. So this may be up in there a good ways. So we got this spring that's going to go on there. And we just want a little bit of a press on that. And the reason I want to do it this way, to have a little spring to it, is so I want this hole to be a little sloppy. That way, when it goes down on it, it will center itself on both the contacts. So, that way we know that it's going to be centered on both of them. So, we're just going to have a little pressure on that. And we'll probably have a, make a washer to put there. And, and then we'll have a washer for the top side and then a pin to go across that to hold that in place. 
but we want it to be in an angle, remember. So, to figure out our angle, we just basically need to uh, put that in there about right there. And draw our angle. It's not going to be much of an angle, but it's going to be an angle. Actually, we probably need to come back a little further. There we go. We'll do the second one. So I'll drill that hole in the center and probably going to be a half inch. Alright guys, now don't be looking at this as a finished product because it's not. Um, basically what we have is the contactor and the two lugs. And I haven't nailed down a spring yet that I'm going to use. I haven't decided which ones I'm going to use. Um, I kind of like to have a little stiff one. It'd be nice if I had two like that one. But I'm having a hard time finding two that match. That is the right strength that I need. So, I made these, but they're a little stiff. Yeah, they're really stiff. I'd have to really stand on it to get it to work. So, I made those for no reason. Um, it's possible I could use something like that one. I may only need one. I don't know. Let me look here. Let me try that. I might just be able to put one in the center there. Yeah, I might be able to just put one in the center. Because I want to need something to hold my tread aluminum down when I do the top. And I'm probably going to shorten this a little bit too. Because I'd like for my tread aluminum to just barely... I'd like for the tread aluminum to be somewhat level to that if I can get it uh, close. Uh, I'm going to change that to a, a regular Carter key instead of this. But this is just temporary to hold it until I can get my measurements right. But I've got it to where it'll contact. And then I need to make a stop so that it stops at around right there so that it doesn't flop the spring out every time you let off of it. So we're going to make it to where it's about like that right there and just put a stud because I need something to hold this down anyway. So I'll just take and put a stud on both sides up through there and put a little wing nut on top of it. And that way when it goes down It'll keep, it'll, it'll be proud of it, but, um, I don't know yet. Uh, I could put a latch on the side of it that keeps it from going up. I'm just trying to keep it from going any further than that right there. You know, about a quarter inch in between the contactor and the studs. And that way, I only got like a quarter inch to go to contact. And yes, I know this is uh, a little far-fetched, but I think this will make a nice switch. And, I mean, who knows? Maybe I can put rubber around the edge of it, and then when it squishes, you know, it's, it'll seal everything out. I don't know yet. Uh, just depends on if I need it or not. We're just testing to see how this is going to work. Um, but right there is a switch. Now the bottom side here, I just cut a big hole out. And this is where we're going to connect our wires. And we need to also figure out a way to run our wires. So 
I'm thinking that maybe we can let me take this uh, spring out so I don't have to keep worrying about losing it. Um, it's a good possibility that we could route a groove in here going up through there and then have our lugs hooked to it because we're actually going to put two stands right there and when we put our two stands here that'll make it so that it's up like like so I got these I don't know where I got them from I got them out of something and that'll keep it up far enough to where I I'll be comfortable putting my foot on it we don't know how this is going to work it's just a test so we're experimenting right now and when I go to put these on there I can just make a plastic plate to correspond with the holes that these screw into and make the plastic plate go over top of it and then screw these on it and that will hold the plate too so we'll see how this works and I can just put a piece of rubber on the bottom of that uh, actually I can use that right there that came off of the uh, cutting board that I cut that out of these were the feet I can just take and thread that right on there thread that and just thread that in there <laughs> then that worked out <laughs> and I got two of those actually I got two more so uh, we'll put that on there that on there we'll have a plastic plate the same plastic plate that we used for the back of the battery tender to put in my truck I still got some of that textured plastic so you know I just hope it ain't going to be too high uh, and then tread aluminum is going to go over top of it to make it look good stainless steel hinge it ain't going to rust and this is a 24 volt contactor or solenoid so there's no reason it shouldn't handle uh, 12 volt with the heavy wire that we have uh, this is the wire that we're going to use for the pedal from the pedal to the um, battery and then the heavier wire will go up to the um, the magnet so this is going to be the end of part two now I'm going to take all this apart once I've milled what I'm going to do, I'm going to take all this back off and squish that together, put it in a mill, and just mill that off flat. Same thing with this side, and the same thing with this side. And then once I've got it done, then I'll just kind of 45 all three sides. And I may even condition this a little bit and make it look a little better. But, you know, we just got to get, the get it to function first. Once we've got it functioning, we'll be golden. So there you have part two of the electromagnetic chuck. <laughs> um, we'll see how this works. I'd rather use a saw machine. Um, I guess I'm going to have to start going to the thrift stores and start looking for old sewing machines that have that switch with it. Just buy the whole thing. Take the sewing machine apart. Get all the stuff out of it. Because I'm sure there's probably a lot of good stuff in a sewing machine. Uh, motor. Um, uh, spindles. Uh, rods. Gears. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff in a sewing machine that can be used. Uh, so... If anybody's got a uh, sewing machine button and no sewing machine, let me know. Maybe we can do some wheeling and dealing. 
Uh, yeah, this is going to be a, a, a nice switch when I'm done. But, I don't know, I might like it. <laughs> we'll find out. So, I hope y'all enjoyed this little experiment. And I think we're going to make this happen. Uh, I just didn't want to work with that big heavy thing yet until I got comfortable with it. So we'll start small. And if it works out okay, then, then we'll do a double one. Um, the only problem with the double one, it needs a whole lot stronger stuff. Uh, heavier wire. Because we figured it up that whatever we use would have to be at least 40 amps. I believe be able to handle 40 amps uh, well 30 anyway but I'd like to try to go a little extra but um, anyway don't forget to like share comment subscribe you guys have a good one later